right there. That's Looney. That's Brother Looney, man, from uh, Mary Can, him and Jim Brown. But let me ask you real quick, brother. Tell me your name one more time. Oh, uh, Bad News. Martin Bowden, formerly known as Bad News. Yes, sir. So let me ask you this, man. When you went to jail in 1975, well, what year did you go to jail? 75, 1975. Okay, and what was, what was your sentence back then? I was given a life sentence. Okay. Yes. So you was given a life sentence, and you went where? What prison did you I hit? I went straight to Solidad. Went straight to Solidad. Straight to Solidad. All right. And when you went to prison, you went to prison as a rolling 60? Yes, indeed. All right. And then at some point, you connected with a guy who was an original Inglewood family. What's yes. his name? Dirty Red. Dirty Red. An original, the original Dirty Red from the Inglewood family. Yes, sir. And then how much time did he have when he got there? Do you know? He had a life sentence also when he got there. All right. Yes. And when y'all were there together, something else happened. What yes, happened? Yes. Uh, uh, a, riot, a riot transpired. People lost their lives. All right. You know, and, you know, and a, a rape, it was a race riot, and people lost their lives. And you know, they said, but some people had to suffer for it. Some people had to take the downfall for it. You know. So uh, I was convicted in one case, and another gentleman, Betty Red, was convicted. Uh, you know, and. The wonderful thing about that, Dirty Red is in my family. I'm from the 60s. We do. We, and what, we don't get along. 60s gangsters, 60s in my family do not get along. Right. But he and I, you know, we had something in common. You know, and we were able to bond and become the best of buddies, best of friends. Is that right? I can go by his cell and eat with him. He can come by and eat with me. We can sit down and walk the track together. And we became, like I said, we became friends. You know, not just mere acquaintance, we became friends. Man, and that's something because people think that, you know, that that don't happen in prison. And I, I be telling people all the time, these little kids out here fighting each other. I said, man, your best friend is going to be somebody you believe was your enemy, man. How often does that happen in oh, there? It's, hard, it's happening regularly because, I mean, it's amazing because we were, I mean, we, we weren't just game. We were enemies. Right. Feuding, and killing each other. But we get inside and you find you have something in common. You remain who you are from. You may remain from evil. You may remain from swan. You may remain from gangster. You may Remain from 60, but you develop with people who once upon a time were your enemies because you have something in common. Right. So had you not been in that riot, when do you, well, first of all, how long did you do? I did 40 years, one month, nine days. Right. So 40 years, how much of that was attributed to the riot? Uh, majority of it. Majority of it was contributed to the riot. So had you not been in a riot, you could have been home? I would have been home. I would have been home. Man. Uh, you know, I would have been home. I would have been home about 20, 30 years old. Wow. So now Dirty Red uh, is still in there. Yes. And would he have been home too? Yes. And But because of the riot? Yes. He, he, because of the riot, he had received another life sentence. Right. So the double life sentence was keeping them in. Yes. And it's the conditions in prison that's making these riots happen. Yes. The, 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 these prisons are set up, along with staff involvement, or uh, to keep the groups that keep the races at each other's throat. Man, and daily it's daily. I mean, the most they don't even let you out in the yard. No, you just want to be out there. They'll put you out there with them, and y'all will go at it. Man, and they be knowing half the time it's about to happen. They know a lot of times. No, they set up before time. Hey, did you ever see the um, documentary they did on the Corcoran um, when they was having them fight and they was putting them uh, out there to fight? I didn't see the documentary, but I know about it very well. Right, yes. okay. So you was in Solidarity the whole time? No, no. I left Solidarity and went to San Quentin back now. This is, the time period I'm talking about, this is before they had the level 1s, 2s, and 3s, 4s. This okay. is the 70s and early 80s. Uh, I left uh, Solidarity and went to San Quentin. And I remained in San Quentin for like 10, 12 years, and then I went on to Folsom. Then after Folsom, I went on to Corcoran, and then I went to Pelican Bay, and then back to, uh, back to Folsom. And I, and I, I, then I paroled from Corcoran after 40 years. All right, and you paroled when? Uh, I, I, October 15, 2015. All right. Well, I appreciate you, brother. I mean, uh, you know, coming from the rolling 60s and, and having a good friend. Are you still in communication with Dirty Red to yeah, this day? We, yeah, to this day. We reestablished contact. And we're, still in, we're still in communication. The man is still, and the glorious part about it is, after all those years in the hole, 30 years in the hole, the man is still solid, mentally solid, spiritually. And, he, and he's it's all around. It's surprising for some people. Say it's surprising that he was able to maintain his sanity, you know, and not go crazy after spending thirty years in isolation. Right. All right. Well, I look forward to him coming home, man. Okay. So I appreciate you, brother. Okay. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you doing the interview. All right, then. Thanks. Thank you. Have a great one.